here to welcome you to the pleasure of your company, Entertaining with George and Martha Washington, which is the Mount Vernon Loan Show uh, at the Washington Winter Antique Show for 2019. One of the highlights of our loan show at the Washington Winter Antique Show is this magnificent reproduction, playable reproduction of Nellie Custis's 1793 harpsichord, uh, which George Washington ordered for her from Longman and Broderick in London. Now, the original harpsichord uh, is was actually the first piece that came back to Mount Vernon uh, when the Ladies Association began preserving it in the mid 19th century, and it's been displayed in the mansion ever since. It's a re we, a few years ago, realized that it was a vulnerable historical artifact that was really having a little difficulty surviving the conditions in the mansion. So we will be in the future displaying it uh, in the museum under standard museum conditions. But in order to have something to display in the little parlor at Mount Vernon, we commissioned this reproduction. Um, it was constructed by John Watson, who is the uh, former uh, curator and conservator of keyboard instruments at Colonial Williamsburg. Um, and it is a magnificent in instrument. And having this reproduction enables us to hear its sound for the first time in almost 200 years. It is a really top of the line harpsichord and we're terribly excited to be bringing its music back to Mount Vernon. The theme of the show is entertaining, and music was a very important part of entertaining for the Washingtons. George Washington loved to dance, although he said he couldn't sing a note, uh, and the Washingtons over the years acquired a number of musical instruments to be played by Martha, by her daughter uh, Patsy, her son Jackie, her granddaughter Nellie. But let's look around at some of the other items in the show that have to do with the theme of entertaining at Mount Vernon. One of the wonderful pieces in the exhibit is this chair, which is one of a set of 24 that George Washington ordered in March of 1797 when he was leaving the presidency and coming home to Mount Vernon. This was a chair that he ordered for his new room, the grand salon style room at the north end of the, at Mount Vernon, very much in the neoclassical style. You see behind it uh, the color of that new room at Mount Vernon. Another key element of entertaining at Mount Vernon uh, was what my granddaughter calls adult beverages. Um, so uh, Washington's favorite um, drink uh, was Madeira, a fortified wine which survived the transatlantic uh, crossing very well. Here we have some items that were used to uh, serve uh, Madeira and other wines at Mount Vernon. To the left of the case is one of the two bottle wine coolers that George Washington ordered for the presidency. Um, and it's a good thing he had a day job because these wine coolers really turned out to be very inconvenient. Um, he ordered two bottle wine coolers and four bottle wine coolers and he wanted them to be able to be passed around the table. But when you fill these wine coolers up with ice and then full bottles of liquor, they proved to be too heavy to um, uh, send around the table. And so then he then commissioned this wonderful wine bottle roller, which is so modern looking. I just love it. Um, it has these four baskets for different dessert wines. And uh, on the bottom, uh, it has these little bone wheels that you could actually slide it down the table to, to your next guest. So these are really wonderful. We also have several uh, wine bottle sealers that have the initials of uh, da uh, Daniel Park Custis, Martha Washington's first husband. Uh, they have the Fairfax, uh, Fairfax family coat of arms, uh, and these would have been impressed on wine bottles that were used to serve uh, guests at Mount Vernon. And these were recovered archeologically uh, from sites on the Mount Vernon property. So another beverage that was very popular at Mount Vernon and other Southern plantations of the 18th century was punch. Uh, Martha Washington owned a number of punch bowls. I think there are nine uh, at the time, at the end of her life at Mount Vernon. This is one of them. It's this wonderful Chinese export porcelain pattern that was very colorful, almost gaudy, was known as tobacco leaf uh, and was very popular among Southern plantations. 
Now the punch that she served uh, was not the sort of lime sherbet church basement kind of thing that we think of punch today for bridal showers and baby showers and so forth. This punch was a heavy stuff. It had rum, it had citrus, it had sugar, it had spices. Um, it was a good pick me up when you arrived at Mount Vernon after a long, uh, a long trip. And we have uh, several visitors who say that they were greeted at the door by Martha Washington and offered a serving of her famous punch. She was very proud of it as she was of her Virginia hats. Of course, key to the Washington's hospitality and their entertaining was the serving of meals for their guests. Uh, and serving meals required china, required silverware, required glassware. In this case, we have four of the Washington's very special china there, as my mother would have said, they're good china. Um, some of these were presentation pieces, some of them were pieces as services that the Washingtons uh, purchased themselves. So to begin with, we have a service that is called the uh, Niederville or Castine service. This was presented to the Washingtons in the summer of 1782 by the um, Comte de Castine who also happened to own a, a porcelain manufactory in eastern France. Um, and this is a, a wonderful uh, service. It has George Washington's monogram kind of floating on this little blot brown cloud. But what's really neat about it is that the, the Comte de Custine was really a clever guy. Um, each of the pieces in the service has a different border on it. And if you turn the piece over, it has a pattern number. So that it was, it was also, it was both a presentation to Washington, it was also a bit of salesmanship because if you saw this service and you said, oh, I like, I like this pattern with these little pink flowers, and you turn it over, you can see that it is pattern number 27. So you don't have to describe it, you just write to the factory and say, I want a service for 200 or for 20 people with pattern number 27. Next is a very special service that is known as the Martha Washington States uh, pattern and it has Martha Washington's initials in the center. It was presented to her by a, a, a merchant in the China, um, China trade in 1795-96. It's highly symbolic, custom design for Martha Washington. Um, around her initials you have a, a circle linked chain of the 15 states in the Union at the time. And around that you have a snake swallowing its tail, which is a symbol of eternity. So the symbolism is really uh, about Martha Washington as the First Lady and the hopes for the Union surviving in perpetuity. Next, we have uh, George Washington's Society of the Cincinnati service, which is something that he purchased shortly after the end of the revolution in 1785. The Society of the Cincinnati was an important fraternal organization for officers of the Continental Army for their mutual support after the end of the war. And George Washington was its first president. So instead of having China with his monogram or his coat of arms on it, he has the insignia of the Society of Cincinnati. Finally, we have three pieces in uh, French porcelain, mostly from the Sev factory, uh, with gilt trim, um, that this is part of a 309 piece service that uh, George Washington purchased from the household of the retiring French minister in 1790. Um, it doesn't have all the decoration that these other services do, but it really speaks to the neoclassical aesthetic. And in fact, producing this pure white china uh, is actually a tour de force because you don't have any overpainted decoration to cover up any flaws. So this was something that Washington would have served as a, a visiting foreign ministers, uh, senators, representatives on in the executive mansion. The big piece at the center uh, is uh, a, a period example uh, similar to what the Washingtons had. Um, it, you may wonder what that piece is. It's called an icery and it's what you would have used to keep ice cream cold in to serve for dessert. We've looked at uh, the four Washington presentation services of, of ceramics. 
What did they use every day when they were just sitting down for breakfast at 7.30 in the morning or having a quick bite for supper before retiring? Well, this, these are examples from what Martha Washington called the blue and white china in common use. So beginning in about the 1760s, the Washingtons began ordering uh, Chinese export porcelain in various uh, variations of this blue and white willow pattern. Um, and they continued, I mean, it got, it got broken and they had to keep replenishing it. So the few pieces that survive from the everyday service, and there aren't too many of those, um, are in various patterns that they acquired over the years. So we have, um, we have this, a stand for a small sauce boat. Um, to the left here, we have this wonderful little patty pan, it was called, which would have been used for tarts. Um, we have a large mug that was probably for coffee in the morning. Uh, we have the period examples of a knife and fork with blue and white porcelain handles, similar to something that we know George and Martha Washington ordered very early in their marriage. And the blue glass bowl is a finger bowl or was called a wash hand bowl so that after you got your fingers sticky at the table, you would dip them in there to wash them off and the blue glass kind of hid all the gunk that would be swimming around in that water. So it's both decorative and practical. Imagine being invited to dinner with the Washingtons, either at the executive president's house or back at Mount Vernon. Dinner was usually served about three o'clock in the afternoon to catch the last of the afternoon light. But in the winter, probably before dinner was finished, you'd have the candlelight coming on and the firelight. So imagine that flickering light bouncing off of some of these wonderful pieces of silverware that the Washingtons owned. So we have, um, we really see in this case, the Washingtons embracing quite early on in the 1780s and then in the 1790s, the neoclassical style inspired by discoveries at places like Pompeii and Herculaneum. George Washington was known as the American Cincinnatus, harking back to the story of the ancient Roman general Cincinnatus, who um, left his plow in the field to go and defend Rome. And then after being victorious, uh, resumed private life, just as George Washington did. So the neoclassical style with its uh, urn shapes, its swags, its wreaths, its anthemian leaves, its columns is very appropriate for the Washingtons. Two of my favorite pieces in this, this case are the Argand lamp, uh, which you see in one corner, the urn-shaped lamp with, with its wonderful curving handles. This was a new invention by a Swiss chemist, um, and it was considered the, the greatest advance in lighting technology since the invention of the candle. And George Washington, who was ever a lover of new technology, as soon as he heard about these things, he was very keen to order several of them. Another favorite piece is this candlestick, uh, which is actually part of a large um, cache, really, of silver that was ordered in 1774 uh, from London to celebrate the wedding of Martha Washington's son, John Park Custis. Um, and this must have been among the earliest examples of neoclassical silver coming into America. And in fact, the, the order that came in for Jack Custis and his bride, Eleanor Calvert, is a mixture of new, new, new neoclassical styles and old older, curving, naturalistic Rococo styles. And I often wonder if they were surprised by the new styles or whether they were expecting that. But it's, it's a wonderful, very sculptural piece. Then in the next case, um, we, we, we are moving from uh, things that the Washingtons actually owned to commemorative pieces. Uh, things for entertaining that celebrate the Washingtons. And so, you know, kind of one of the themes for this is uh, you wanted to dine with the Washingtons? Sure, you can. You can get plates or pitchers or teapots or cups uh, with either portraits of George Washington and Martha Washington or images of their home at Mount Vernon. And you too can bring them home to dine with the Washingtons in your house. So one of the themes of the antique show here is really to, to connect these wonderful historic artistic collectible items with people today, that, that these can be part of your life today. 
and so we're really excited to uh, to show these. In fact, this pitcher, um, this blue and white Staffordshire English pitcher uh, with a transfer printed scene of Bob Burnham was purchased last year here at the Washington Antique Show. So you can take the Washington's home with you as well. Well, another commemorative piece that we're featuring in the loan exhibit here is this Parian pitcher, which was made in the 1850s in England, which is just about the time that the Mount Vernon Ladies Association is um, uh, purchasing in order to preserve George Washington's estate. So it shows this real fascination with Washington in the mid 19th century. The particular scene on the front of this um, uh, picture is uh, George Washington with his mother, Mary Ball Washington, uh, either say, it looks like saying farewell, farewell as he is about to uh, take command of the Continental Army. That's a mythical scene, much like George Washington chopping down the cherry tree, because we know that Washington was not able to make a trip to go visit his mother prior to going and taking off command. Uh, but there was a lot of interest, a lot of sentimental interest in Mary Ball Washington in the mid-19th century, and that's celebrated in this picture. Well, I'm standing here beside a wonderful uh, reproduction of one of my favorite pieces in the Mount Vernon collection. Uh, the original, it's based on a pair of torchers, they were called, which is a very a fancy word for candle stands, uh, that the Washingtons acquired probably around 1759-1760. Um, this design is straight out of a London pattern book and it is the height of the Rococo style with all of its naturalistic curves, its sea scrolls, its um, naturalistic foliage. Um, and this uh, reproduction was produced by Mac Headley and Kari Loftheim down at the Colonial Williamsburg Hay Shop. Uh, and I wanted to show it in the exhibit up high like this so that people could really get a look at the extraordinary design and the, the detail in the carving uh, dating back to the 18th century but still being produced by very talented craftsmen today. I'm standing here now with a table set uh, with some of the items that are, again, reproduced from the kinds of things that we know Georgia Wash Martha Washington owned and entertained with. Uh, blue and white china uh, over a, a service plate of a stoneware pattern, which they uh, owned early on in the 1750s before they began acquiring Chinese porcelain. So the table is all set with uh, reproduction pieces, uh, which give you a sense of, of what a table at the time might have looked like. Another factor of their entertaining that we might not automatically think of is who's serving that food? Who's preparing that food? And of course the Washingtons were Virginia plantation owners um, and they were served by a cadre of enslaved house servants. What you see behind me is a reproduction of the Washington livery, it was called, which was a, a special kind of uniform that would have identified his, its wearer as the servant of an elite household. So this is a, a livery suit in the style of the 1760s, and its white and red colors are the colors of George Washington's family uh, coat of arms, which he specifically ordered for the design of his livery suit. So um, it's been a great pleasure to uh, take you through the Mount Vernon uh, loan exhibition presented by the Mount Vernon Ladies Association at the uh, Washington DC uh, Winter Antique Show for 2019. This exhibit will be on display through the run of the show. So starting on uh, Friday, January 11th through Sunday afternoon, January 13th. And we hope you'll come and see it. We will have uh, the harpsichord being played on Friday and Saturday afternoons from noon until three o'clock, uh, which will be a further treat. And I hope to see you at the exhibit. Yeah. Thank you so much.